Ladies and gentlemen, RPT season number eight, episode of Hundo. It is Wednesday, October 27th, year of our Lord, 2021. I am Chingo Bling, your hostess. No, your host with the most. Hostess. And we, yeah, whoa, no. whoa. Hostess. Yeah, no, that, those are cupcakes, man. Fuck all that, man. We gangster around here. A lot of people said it wouldn't be possible for us to make it to episode of Hundo season numero ocho. But we are here, man. We got producer Rob in the building. What's up, everybody? I'm feeling fantastic, man. I was watching old clips of the podcast. Mm. You know, you know, just young Chingo. It was like episode 18. Yeah. Back in the beginning where you couldn't even see Rob half the time. <laughs> it's true. For like the first we just had the, the cam right here in my grill. But it's funny, man, listening. It's like those episodes are going to be gold. It's going to be classic. Like a couple of years from now, people are going to go back and listen and be like, Man, I didn't know what he was talking about at the time, bro. But shit, man, shit fucked up now. Newsom done banned uh, small, what, uh, small gas small equipment. Engines, yeah, small lawn equipment. That's gonna hurt the rasa. Can you imagine, bro? Like, well, I don't know all the differences between like a plug-in lawnmower versus, you know what I mean, the battery operated. Yeah. But it, right, we're, we're gonna talk about it. But it's like right here in our country, it's like you can go to another state, and it's like, damn, y'all live totally different. And of course, they're 100%. probably gonna. They might feel inclined to be like, well, it's better here. It's for the environment. As you can see, we're doing our part. You know, I can't believe you guys still drill oil out the ground and stuff like that. But uh, very excited, man. Um, we, so we, uh, we try to stay on topic, right? But yeah. a part of the, the, I think the allure of this podcast is that we don't stay on topic a lot of the times. <laughs> we have show notes for a reason. It doesn't mean we're always going to get to them. And uh, I think people appreciate that. Yeah, I, I'm about to announce my tour dates and all that. But... um. If you want, we can do the intro all over again. No, not at all. <laughs> I like, that's what I'm saying. I want to say it because I like the way we do the intro because there's a lot of things to get to that aren't even on that sheet, like your fucking five hour Instagram live you did yesterday. But keep going. Go ahead. Five hour. Oh, was it that long? No, it was like two hours though. Oh my God. Yeah, we ran errands and shit. But I say that to say this. Check this out. Before we get into all the announcements and the housekeeping and, and, and what we're going to talk about today, I just want to say thank you guys, man. It's episode 100. Thank you, Rob, mm. for setting up this this vehicle and having the whole system of look man it's almost like he it's almost like rob knew like hey man you probably need some therapy right now you need to talk to somebody yeah let's get you on this microphone and you could talk because i'm telling you i was looking at clips from episode 18 and like i'd be wanting to post this shit but it's like i'm already shadow banned am i gonna make it worse <laughs> is anybody even gonna see it before we even kicked off the podcast it was a day it was like the week after or the day after thanksgiving or something and we ended up talking like 45 minutes on the phone about this idea after not having talked for a couple months so i I knew I was like, initially, I was like, I don't know. And then we chatted and you're like, oh, he's definitely interested. So it was good. Well, yeah, man. Um, I've, I've been sold. I mean, we've been, we were doing a podcast for a while before we even went this, um, create this RPT, Red Pill Tamales. But I just want to say thank you guys, man. Um, I also watched Steven Crowder's mission statement video last night. And, you know, these are interesting times. You know, I feel that these are important discussions. Obviously, thousands and thousands of people that tune in every week across all platforms also are concerned with the amount of spending going on with the country, man. Like, what's up with this inflation? Like, should I hold cash or should I store it up in the form of real estate or something else? And, you know, we're going to have Chris Irons on the show. We're going to talk mm -hmm. economics. I mean, politics aside, I mean, the dollar. You know what I mean? Look at the peso. Like, you know, a lot of y'all have parents and stuff from Mexico, grandparents. Like, we want a strong economy, a strong dollar. Uh, we don't want no corruption. We don't want a shitty country. Don't let them turn America, the beautiful, the great, into a third world country. A lot of the parents are concerned what's going on at the school boards. You know, what, what's in the curriculum? What's all this critical race theory stuff? People concerned about mandates. Like, is jab a job? I don't, can I even say that word on social media in 2021? Uh, but here we are. And thank you guys for just being on the journey, man. Being a part of the Tamal Intelligence Agency. Uh, we don't, as y'all know, we don't have a whole bunch of sponsors. We don't be on here like, oh, uh, yeah, man, shout out to Wooty Woo and, you know, such and such. I mean, we could. We could beat you over the head with a whole bunch of commercials and stuff like that. But... This is all TIA funded. We appreciate you guys. We're shadow banned like a mug. So thanks to everybody signed up to the newsletter. Everyone that tunes in. All the patrons. Patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. And this is a seedling. It's only episode 100. Yeah. And right. shout out to, we had a new one as you're talking, come in. Luciano signed up for a whole year on Patreon up front. Thank the you, whole, Luciano. For sure. I, I know it sounds like a telethon and all that, but you know, it's like we're having to work around censors censorship and, and and big tech and you know cancel culture and all this stuff you know people want to categorize anybody that says hey man we got a big ass caravan coming 
You know what I'm saying? Or, hey, man, is this dude from the NBA allowed to speak out against China? Like, do they have that much power in our culture and society? But I am a stand-up comedian. I am very blessed to, to have this podcast. Uh, we want to meet you guys in person. Uh, you know, meet members of the Thea. That's one of the best things about being on tour. My next stop is Irvine, California. I'll be at the Irvine Improv November 3rd. Bring it back home. Houston, Texas. I know Canelo will be fighting, but that's okay. You know Canelo. He, he, who he fight, man? A little dude from Nashville. You know, he got some hands or whatever. But you already saw how Canelo slapped him up in the damn press conference. So I'll be at the Houston Improv November 5th through the 7th. Las Vegas, Nevada. Finally happening November 11th at Wise Guys Comedy Club. And then Salt Lake City, Wise Guys Comedy Club as well, November 18th. So today... Uh, I just want to say, man, shout out to everybody on the Discord. That shit is fun. Yeah. I've been, I've been hearing about Discord. I just never really got on there. But now that we have it for the, uh, for the RPT. Yes. It's like, oh, this shit is jumping. Dude, yeah, I'm glad you're in there. Chingo downloaded it. We got him set up. It's, it's RPT, but we're probably going to change the name to the, the Molly King. And uh, yeah, man, I, you got to like, you get the notifications. And if you're in there, you, you know this. And if you're familiar with it, you know this. But it's fun to check it every like couple of hours or a couple times a day because you don't know who's going to say what or what they're talking about. And they're having conversations among themselves a lot of the times. And you're just kind of like jumping in with them. It's fun. <clears throat> yeah, I totally dig it. So um, you get access to our, our private chat room on the Discord when you become a Thea member on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash red pill, the miles, and of course the newsletter. It's coming in hot, chingobling.com. Stay in the loop with us. Check your junk mail folder. Don't let Google interfere with your Gmail and send us to spam. But we, make, we promise to make it worth your time and bring you some value. Um, that's it for announcements, man. On today's show, right now as we speak, we have the caravan of all caravans building up. I heard there's people from like over 100 countries, bro. Really? They, you saw the video. We're going to talk about it. They busted through the, the southern border. Yeah. Uh, I think it's called like Tapachula, Mexico. I forget the name of the. Maybe it was from Telosico, Mexico. I don't know. Anyway, uh, athletes are continuing to push back. Very, very interested in that. Shout out to the Boston Celtics. Big Tech, what are we going to do with you, Big Tech? Mm. Mr. Zuckerberg, what are we going to do with you and your little metaverse? Yep. Um, Please give us a review on iTunes right now as we speak. Just pull it up. Give them the thumbs up, the five stars. Leave a little comment. If you understand, you dig it, and you kind of peep what we're trying to do. And that's it, man. Um, what is Joseph Raheem Breezy going to do with this big-ass caravan that's coming right now? I didn't see many videos. I saw, like, one short video, but this one's from uh, everyone's favorite, Newsmax. I try to pull up, like, middle to left publications, but sometimes you just got to pull up an old Newsmax or... Sometimes you got to go, all right. Oh, yeah. Stopping. This JK. Is thousands of migrants recently broke out of the Mexican city mm -hmm. of Tapachula in... Tapachula. Rouse. Tapachula. Damn, you were right. Man, come on. Now to discuss, Chad Wolf, former acting DHS secretary and Heritage Foundation visiting fellow. Uh, Chad... As I understand it, these Oof. folks are trying to beat the deadline for uh, the Remain in Mexico policy to be re-implemented that existed under President Trump. How much information does the current DHS secretary have on uh, the, the, this kind of a gathering, uh, even though they may disperse later? What kind of information can you know and what can you do about it when you see it? Well, I would say that the secretary is certainly getting real-time information and intelligence about the group and the caravan uh, as it moves forward. The question is, depending on if they were biometrically checked in, the, in, in Guatemala, for instance, or in Honduras, or even in Mexico, then you can start doing background checks and you can start to understand who is making up the flow of this caravan. Is it just families? Are, are there bad actors involved in that caravan as well? So that's really what, if you're at the department today and you're looking at this caravan, you want to know who's making up the, the composition of the caravan and what are any public safety or national security threats that your, your agents... That's crazy. All right. It, it, first of all, I mean, that's from yesterday morning. So I don't know how far along past the Mexico border this caravan is. Um, I thought it was like anywhere between seven and 10,000 is what I, what I remember reading last. It looked like a shit ton more than that after seeing a few of these videos. And it's not going to be the last one. No. And they know that, um, okay, what's, what's this? Uh, really? 
because Mexico didn't take care of us. Mexico didn't take care of you? Yes. And you felt like you were in, in prison? You yeah, were yeah, stuck I'm, there? Yeah, I'm stuck. I'm in prison. Okay, so you think it'll be different in the U.S.? Yes, must, surely it must be different. Surely it must be different. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so pause real quick. Um, yeah, there's a lot of videos uh, keeping an eye on this, and they interview some of the migrants, and some of the people said, uh, I, think, I think Tucker Carlson put together the segment, but uh, one of the migrants was like, you know, why are you, why are you coming now? He said, because of Biden. Now's the time. Now's the time. Now's a window of opportunity. Window of opportunity. Now's the time. And it's just, remember, y'all, people on the left and Democrats, you always got to factor in human motivation. Mm-hmm. You can't just think like, man, we just going to, you know, say surge the border. You know, I, it's all about optics with this administration. They want to, like, move the people. They'll hide the people, a little shell game. When the kids were piling up in, the, in them centers, they're like, okay, move these motherfuckers around, send some to military bases. I don't know what the hell they did, right, through these uh, non-government, like NGO, whatever, third party People picking up kids and shit. They checking out kids like library books. No kind of background checks. Undoing all of that. You know, because Trump was really going after human trafficking. I know we're not supposed to say his name and all that. A la verga. Is that a drone, bro? Bro, is that a plane falling out of the sky? That sounds like a tiny Cessna. Who knows, y'all? It might be going down right now, right? (laughs) Um a motherfucking WW3 Come in this on, bitch. Man. Come on, Brandon. How you protect us, Brandon. Please, Brandon. We scared. But my main point is this. We warned y'all. We told y'all. When Biden gets in, how, do you not think that he's going to have a mess at the border? I, I, I could have swore. We literally said... You think he's going to fix this whole kids in cages problem? You think he's going to just stop? Like, you think he's going to be tough? And be like, yeah, you know what, psych, build the wall. Because we need, like he used to, 08 Biden, when he'd be like, nah, we, we can't have When he drove of- through the border, you mean? When he visited the border last by driving through in 2008? That is so lame, bro. <laughs> it's so stupid. But let me tell you this. Let me, let me put this towards you and, and see what you think. Um, uh, Scott Adams is popular for saying this, is that you can't, you can't meet somebody who disagrees with your perspective or point of view with your facts. Because you're immediately disregarding their facts and you're contradicting them and that's not how to get somebody on your side Mm -hmm. going back to persuasion right Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with that known i think we all know that like if you if you're talking to a family member a friend a relative coworker, whoever and you disagree with them you tell them like hold up you got that wrong it's actually abc they think it's xyz Mm -hmm. but that doesn't work because they're immediately going to become combative and be like why are you saying what i think how do you actually approach those kind of people I really don't talk to people about this shit. I really don't. Like, I know you don't, but we, yeah. we're kind of doing that with the podcast, though. Yeah, okay. So so hypothetically, right? Hypothetically. Yeah. Um, basically, my, my stance and my argument, I guess first and foremost, do they believe in open borders, yeah. this person? You know, I don't know if they're just saying, I don't know what the disagreement is. If it's like, well, Biden is fixing it. You know, Trump messed it up. You know, I don't know what this hypothetical situation is, but... In general, you know, what I'm trying to communicate to people is that if you were duped into being a voter for Biden, because, you know, it's not your fault. You probably weren't paying attention. I mean, you literally were under a psychological, like a psyop. Like, they created false narratives. They use a lot of propaganda. I mean, the media, as y'all can see, I'm sure a lot of y'all listening know that the media is super biased. They call it, you know, like the Rogan thing with the horse goo. It's just hoax after hoax after hoax. So my, our prediction, if I'm not mistaken, is, is I'm, I'm pretty sure we talked about it, where it's like everybody that got duped into voting for Biden, either A, he's going to have to re-implement some of Trump shit, and he's going to have to be somewhat tough and look like he's contradicting some of his campaign promises, right? Like, oh, now this motherfucker want to build a wall, right? We haven't really seen that. He's kind of been Mr. Open Borders. Like, they'll try to force him, like, hey, hey, man. We got to put this Remain in Mexico shit back on. He'd be like, all right, we'll get to it. And it's like, no, motherfucker, like, you need to re-implement this shit. And now you got these big old caravans coming. What are you going to do, Joe? You already have all these crises. Arguably, there's a lot of factors when it comes to, you know, cost of goods and scarcity and shortages and supply chain issues. I mean, obviously, that's been an issue for a long time. You know, we didn't get here overnight where we offshored all our fucking jobs and manufacturing. However, it was a dude with orange hair, orange man Hitler, they call him. 
He was actually trying to hire American, buy American, bring the shit back, a.k.a. let's get ahead of this supply chain issue. But Biden has so many crises right now. They actually making fun of him on SNL. I can't wait to pull that up. Did you see that, uh, the, the meme that we posted on the What Did He Said page? Uh, the lady on Twitter that was like, zero days since. Susan, right? Yes, yeah, it, was, it was Joe Biden's report card. The thread on that Twitter post was unbelievable. How many people were just like, yes, absolutely. And they were like, they were writing other things that were like, kind of like not really things, but just something to add to it. Like zero days since, you know, whatever. Yeah, playing golf all day. Yeah, or whatever. yeah, the whole fucking thing. And that's how a lot of people do look at this president. I think because they cherry pick and it's something called cognitive bias. Yeah. If you already p- put a, um, a money bet on this horse, you already put money on that horse. You already like made a choice in the decision. So it's called cognitive bias where you're more likely to start seeing good attributes in that horse you already placed a bet on. Mm. So all of a sudden you're going to cherry pick information and be like, yeah, I do like this meme. And I agree that this person said zero days quid pro quo on the phone with Ukraine or whatever. Zero days mean tweets. Zero days uh, grabbing them by the pussy. And all these things where they're meant to go viral. They're meant to people who are already biased to just be like, fuck yeah, retweet. So like sometimes my 13 year old, Back when I was on TikTok, she would send me like TikToks like, hey, dad, look at this. Look at what they're saying. And it'd be like little arguments like this is why Biden is better. Mm. And half the list, I got to tell her, Mija, this didn't happen. He never said drink bleach. You know what I mean? COVID wasn't his fault. He was dealing. Everybody had cases because they automatically what they would try to do is be like 600,000 Americans died on his watch. Well, guess what? Now we got Brandon in. And CNN lost the ticker of the case count. Now they cherry picking the data. They lying with statistics. They're not even saying anything about Fauci's, you know, revealing or NIH revealing that they did, you know, fun gain of function. Boy, what did he do to them beagles, Rob? That's pretty crazy. I didn't put either of those two on the list for today. I was going to save that for the premium episode. The beagles, Rob. I'm not a dog person, but that's pretty fucked up. Beagle lives matter. Not to them. But in all fairness, we experiment with a lot of crazy, like a lot of crazy things on animals in order to make them human approved. So I don't know how deep that story went. So supposedly they were testing a medicine that was going to... It was an infectious disease medicine, I think. To or help, a parasite medicine. To help combat... Okay, give them ivermectin. To help them, <laughs> to help them combat the, I guess, these little sand flies. Yeah, they were infected sand flies, correct. And in the process, you got to torture a couple beagles. So, you know, a couple beagles got to get their face off eight. You know how well, you, know they're they, alive. you know what they start with before they even start feeding them into their faces? They tear out their vocal cords. They, they cut their vocal cords. So they can't motherfucking bark. Or whimper. And whimper or ask for help. That's the world we live in. Roo! <laughs> Imagine it's Scooby Doo. You uh, know, people love to anthropomorphize <laughs> animals, right? Make them human like. Yeah, Imagine yeah. it's fucking yeah. Scooby Doo. Personify. Look. I got this bit I've been doing, right, where I talk about, you know, <clears throat> guns and, you know, Second Amendment and this and that. And there's a part, I'll give it away to y'all, it's, it's a stupid f- tag. But basically there's a part where I'm like, man, we even, like, we left, we left $84 <laughs> billion. We was like, man, we left tanks, Humvees, oh, yeah. uh, uh, helicopters, you know, night vision goggles, bulletproof vests, knives, German shepherds. We even left the German shepherds. And it's like, those are German shepherds. <laughs> Now they got to learn, uh, uh, te- uh, what is it, or, or do. But I, sometimes that's the actual language they speak. But I was like, now they got to learn Afghan. Now they Afghani shepherds. Yeah. You know, they got to learn whole new things. <laughs> you know, and Jingo's not George Carlin over here. Like, that. the whole set's not about that. Yeah, but yeah, the little yeah. stuff that you've put in there is totally out of, like, left field from, from just previous sets where it was obviously never close to any of that kind of stuff. Yeah, man, because... You know, not to get too Chingo Chats with it, which is our other show. Check it out. It's not political. Should have said at the beginning, brand new feed. Brand Go new feed. search Chingo Chats and Spotify on iTunes. You can find it. It's its own show. Episode 40 is a free episode. We're going to have a public episode of Chingo Chats the way we do RPT, and it's going to be up every Thursday. I put this one up on Tuesday. But I figured we're going to do it on Thursdays and uh, go listen to it. Enjoy. It was a great episode. It was about your Barn Dominium obsession coming back from San Antonio. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Yeah, we talk about random shit, man. One, we did one whole episode talking about El Alfa and, you know, random stuff. But anyway, 
What the fuck were we just talking about right now? German uh, oh, comedy, yeah. comedy, yeah, real comedy. quick, because I mentioned the, the <clears throat> Taliban shepherds and don't forget Fauci. We on your ass. Peter's on your ass. We're gonna get back to you in a hot minute, Mr. Fauci. We ain't calling you doctor. Cause you were you was Tony. You, you, you sound like a sociopath. You sound pretty sadistic. But we're gonna get back to you in a minute. And God bless these beagles because they might be the reason that Americans start to pay attention to what the hell's going on at the NIH and all this other stuff with your tax dollars. So when it comes to comedy, you want to keep it fresh and topical. You don't want your material getting stale. You, you want to stay limber and, and open. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to become robo-comic with a memorized script that just gets so dusty. Like when I came in the game, I'll say this. When I came in the game, I, I just knew that you have to be constantly editing and polishing and trying and cutting stuff out and starting over. I had that approach. So a lot of other comics that were a little bit more stiff with it, they're like, this is the five minutes that mm-hmm. worked for me. It kills. It took me a long time. And you're like, why don't you improvise a little bit and maybe talk about what happened on the way up here? We'll do one. But anyway, come check out a show, Freedom of Speech Tour. Um, back to Dr. Fauci. Bro, I mean... I was waiting to see if Peter was going to say something, and they did. They ha- have they? Yeah. Okay, I yeah. did it. They pinned that comment, that, that tweet and everything. They must have had a quick meeting, like, hey, man, uh, do we owe them any favors? Did he give us any money? No, nah, last time I checked, this motherfucker quit paying us money. Peter, you, you got to think. You got to think they've been paying Peter, allegedly. Let's hypothetically, right? Yeah. This is a big charge. But if you're doing crazy animal experiments... Wouldn't you find a way to grant some science money or launder, like put some money in the hands of PETA so they don't come knocking at your door like, and look who else has been abusing animals, huh? The National Institute of Health. So, Oh, this was the article I saw. It was a, it was a Vanity Fair article. In major shift, NIH admits funding risky virus in Wuhan. Uh, did you see this one by chance? This is the picture that's like going around. Um, they throwing him under the bus, bro. They, they're starting to, right? It's like he's going to be the fall guy. But we said this about the emails because we started seeing them less and less on TV and then like three or four weeks went by and maybe not even that. And the news cycle's so damn fast that he's back in the news, back we, on every show. Yeah, wait till, they, wait till they really get to talk about these beagles because right here, they're just talking about how he contradicted himself. Not in, just contradicted, In front lying. of Congress, yeah. yeah. So, they, so they, it's a very interesting play. Some people would speculate that it was going to be Peter Daszak that caused some heat. Mm-hmm. Even if it got to be three fall guys, the real people behind the scenes, I don't want to sound like conspiracy, but, you know, some of the other players yeah. may get away scot-free because you don't really know their names. And then I saw, so Eagle Health Alliance in a statement. Uh, That's Peter Daszak's company. Right. So I think Eagle Health Alliance posted a video on Twitter that was a, it was like a, it was like a it was like a quick screen grab of information that they had submitted, I guess maybe to the NIH or somehow to the government back in 2018, alluding to or or you know letting people know that they knew essentially since way before the pandemic of what was going on. So this entire time, like 15 days to fl- fucking flatten the curve or whatever it was, they knew already then what was going on. Meaning they already knew it was a coronavirus that came from the, yep. from the lab. They knew what kind of testing was going on there. They knew exactly. What kind of, they knew where the funding was going to. This whole fucking thing, and, and this is and this is really going to get a little conspiratorial. You could have just said this. You could have just said this at the beginning of it and been pretty spot on with what was true. And, but you would obviously have been looked at as a conspiracy theorist. And we were. We were like six, seven, eight months into the whole fucking pandemic. But it's not that crazy to be like, where did it come from? Who was work- who's in on it? What are their past like? What organ? But no, like it was completely ignored by everybody and all, all major officials almost. So yeah, it sounds like a cover up, super cover. I highly recommend. Uh, I, I, I believe her name is Sherry Markson. I believe that's her name. Hmm. She's a Sky News Australia j- journalist. She has what you could do is you can get on YouTube, right, um, and then pull up. What Really Happened in Wuhan. It's the title of her book. It's out right now, I believe. And I want to get that motherfucker. I want to get uh, Dr. Peter Navarro's book as well. But Because uh, he was in the Situation Room. He was in the White House. And he, he calls out Fauci. But anyway, Sherry Markson, 
You can watch the documentary version. We're almost done with it. It's on YouTube. What really happened in Wuhan? She has Trump on there. She's like, you early with Australian accent. Mm-hmm. Early on, you were one of the people who questioned the the lab theory. You know, he's like, yes, yeah, there were body bags. There were many bodies. You know, it was it was very obvious. So if Fauci had raised his hand and said, hey, boss, is this a coronavirus? Yes, it is. Um, did it come from, was it like in the Wuhan area? Yes, we're hearing many reports. Now they're starting to report some cases and they're looking into testing and what to do. Um, was it maybe a coronavirus maybe that was being used, studied on bats and shit and in the Wuhan Institute of Virology? Actually, yes, that's what we suspect. Yeah, because we, we knew exactly what they were fucking studying because we the ones that paid for it. All he had to do was raise his hand. We would have had a different strategy, bro. But we, that, lives could have been saved. Yeah, lives from lives is the way they look at it. It's not in their best interest to be that transparent. Like, how many bags am I going to lose? How many people that have been backing me for decades, decades, are going to lose bags as well if we don't go the route of therapeutics and vaccines and mandates in this whole fucking tyrannical situation that we're in right now? Yeah, because the system is set up to where, like you just described, is a scientist incentivized to, like, blow a whistle? Well, some tried. Some of the people from China, they do one doctor. I think she was like one of the first, first cases. Um, They disappeared her off the Internet. And then one journalist, they they like scrubbed her her entire fucking existence off the Internet. And then one independent journalist in China, he was calling it out. He was like, it's a cover up. They not telling y'all what's really going on. He was trying to get the word out. What happened to him? Disappeared. Really? Yes. The People's Republic uh, disappeared your motherfucking ass disappeared bro like Reynosa Tamaulipas style you seen them videos from, from uh, Matamoros Matamoros yeah. Yeah. Da, 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 da. dude um, yeah my mom just went to Vitamosa recently and it's like uh, you ain't heard what's going on they probably fighting over who's gonna control the plaza cause these caravans coming to who's gonna get their cut that's too much money right there but anyway um, so what really happened in Wuhan is the book okay it was oh this published in wait originally published in 2013 mm-hmm yeah, I don't know about that. I think it's a brand new book, Sherry Markson. Yeah. Bro, early, I think it was um, early 2019, there was this international military games in Wuhan where athletes and soldiers from different countries, almost like a military Olympics, right? You had people from all over the world in Wuhan, early 2019, and some speculate that that's when the bug first started getting distributed worldwide. Right. And did you know this, Rob? If y'all watch the documentary, it's very interesting. It also states that um, the Wuhan Institute of Virology was put together and funded in, like, I guess, co-collaboration with, um, I think it was the French government or something like that, right? Well, as soon as, as soon as the Chinese military kind of said this is very interesting what's going on over here and they just kind of said you know what we we want to be a part of this the french people got ousted out like it was one of those where like um they were no longer welcome they never they just didn't have access no more and it's like hey we we you know we helped y'all build this like i thought we were in cahoots and it's like no our military really likes the possibilities here you so you can't be here and then how they disappeared the whole database bro the entire what they were studying, like around the time that they knew that they had to start cleaning up their tracks, they just disappeared the whole fucking coronavirus database thing. Hmm. And I know we're on big tech's platform and I know their artificial intelligence is breaking down, listening to every word I'm saying. So good luck. Y'all seeing this. Originally named the Hygiene Laboratory, the NIH was founded by Joseph Kinyon of the Marine Hospital Service, MHS, in 1887. From humble beginnings, this one-room laboratory relocated to Washington, D.C. in 1891. Damn, it's been around for a long time. Uh, And then a new building was constructed in 1901. The NIH's founding legislation was... It doesn't say anything about France. The Wuhan Institute of Virology? No, this was the National Institute of Health. No, I'm talking about... about, Oh, I'm talking about Wuhan... Or the WHO. Sorry, you said the WHO. No, my bad. I meant... The Wuhan Institute of Virology. Oh, that laboratory was co-established with the Fr- along with the French. But once they realized that they were getting pushed away and didn't have no gotcha. transparency, was due to the Chinese military really being interested in the possibilities of what you could do. 
Gotcha, gotcha. What gotcha. you can do with those little bugs when you start to mess around with gain of function. And you're using American tax dollars the whole time. Meanwhile, you hop on the propaganda machine and you just, you know, oh, well, you know, five masks, three masks, two masks, 15 days, this, that, you know, uh, jab your kids, you know, five years and up and, you know, fuck the, the mother treatments. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah, it was founded in 1956 as a Wuhan microbiology laboratory under the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Okay, okay. But then the military got involved. And yes. it's basically a military lab. And for all intensive purposes, for all practical purposes, it's a military lab. I highly recommend it. Sherry Markson, what really happened in Wuhan. You can even watch the video on YouTube. And she has a book. Um, I definitely want to get it. I know I'm going to end up on the list and shit. <laughs> I also want to get um, Unrestricted Warfare. But that one definitely will put you on the list because I called Barnes and Noble and Half Price Books, and they're like, um, "Yeah, you got to come in and request it, and then it's basically a print on demand, mm, right, 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 type of thing." And I'm like, "All right, let me call you back." This is like a saga of that book. Like we've been talking about this for months. Yeah, she goes <laughs> on the list. We know it. I'm pretty fucking sure. Um, yeah, I went and bought my Biden mask yesterday at the Halloween Spirit Store for what? For Halloween, I'm going to be Biden. I'm going to be Brandon. Did it say Brandon on the box? You mentioned this uh, SNL thing. I didn't see it. Did you see it? Um, I Yeah, I saw one of the jokes. I didn't see all the jokes. But one of the jokes, I, I, I hope somebody can... Oh, Ghost of Biden, code open. We should watch this. You can hope somebody what? Um, somebody chops up the like the compilation of like here are all the parts where they talked about biden okay yeah you're right because it, it's kind of long. we'll go through some of it um by the way guys we are on youtube when we play stuff like this if it's not on patreon it immediately gets demonetized oh, fuck. so um patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales but let's see what this is about send in my press secretary jen saki <laughs> he's way too good looking to be jen saki Wanted to see me, sir? Jen, I gotta tell you, you're dynamite in those press briefings with your, your quips and your one-liners. What do you call those little singers? Uh, facts. Though I, uh, believe, um, the internet calls them sake bombs. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Love that. Lay some of those facts on me. Okay, um, your CNN town hall was watched by no one, and your approval rating is in the dumpster. Ooh. I scold sake bomb. <laughs> But hey, things are going to turn around, right? I'm um, bad at lying, so I'm... Bad at lying. Gonna leave. I don't understand. People used to like me. The press would call me Uncle Joe. I miss the old me. Where the hell did that guy go? Was it Jason Sudeikis? Sudeikis? Yeah. I like him. Yeah, no, I, I like him too, yeah. He, he needs to go in on Biden. For real. He's got the teeth and the smile down. <laughs> Trick or treat, smell my feet. No, I'm just joking. And how the hell are you, buddy? Hey, wait a second. Who are you? Who am I? What do you mean, who am I? I'm you. I'm you from eight years ago, man. Eight years ago. The ghost of Biden passed. Boom! <laughs> I've got energy. I'm not sleepy. You, you seem so happy, so yeah. carefree. So, so, so uh, what's the word I'm looking Awake. for? Lucid. 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 Yeah, partner. Well, you know, where I'm from, we're still VP, you know? Easiest gig in the world. We're like America's wacky neighbor, you know? Just pop in with an ice cream cone, some aviator shade, do some finger guns, you know, shake a few hands, rub a few shoulders. Oh, well. Yeah, well, you can't do that anymore. What? Which one, rubbing shoulders or shaking hands? Clearly both. Oh, come on, man. Loosen up, buddy. Come on, come on. What happened to us, huh? We used to be fine, right? Oh, here, let me get a whip. Oh, God. Okay, man. Let's not get all the way demonetized. Yeah. All right. That's, I mean, it's half Bro. of it. It's more than I thought they would have gone in on. Bro, I can't remember whose take this was, but I'm going to take it. Okay. Ready? It's yours now. It's my take now, homie. What's up, big dog? Check it out. Team Kamala is working behind the scenes. I did hear that. That's why she's so damn quiet. I No, dude, I believe it. After seeing this, I totally believe it. Because she either... She called Jason Sudeikis and said, hey, Jason. No, I'm he didn't. No, nah, no. Nah, he's just an actor, bro. 
you got bigger it's players. called Lauren Michaels. Or even the fucking network. Mm. Or, I mean, I mean, it does sound like a stretch when you put it that way, where it's like, you're telling me that a VP can manipulate culture, but it's not just a VP. It's the establishment. It's, is it George Soros and Obama and these Clintons and the Bushes that are like, all right, are we, is he out? Are we going to turn on him yet? Are we putting her in? Let me know so we can run this propaganda. Do y'all want do y'all want to sell the idea to the American public that maybe it's time we have the first black female president and have this hope and change? Uh, and finally they can solve racism, right? Um, I don't think it's too far fetched because either A, Lauren Michaels and SNL all of a sudden wanna be non biased and fucking, you know, I don't know, what what would what would the word be? Like actually credible fair yeah credible are they trying to like you know yeah fair talk about both sides i just think it's a spicy take and i like it i like it too here's another spicy take um i don't know who said this either but somebody they were talking about who what was the reason that comedy and comedians and politics came to blend and and be so i don't know such a pivotal part of like the whole conversation and they were blaming it on john stewart I didn't. I didn't watch a lot of John Stewart. He's he's obviously like a little bit before my time when he was really at the top of his game. Um, do you agree with that? Do you think that he was a guy that really pushed politics into late night and comedy and? Yeah, I th- I didn't really think about that till you said it, and um, I think it checks out because obviously you had Carlin doing it for decades, the seventies and eighties and stuff like that. Um, you know, Richard Pryor, Bill Cosby, they didn't really get political per se. Uh, so yeah, I think it kind of makes sense that John Stewart was someone who said, "Hey, there's something here. I think I can make it cool, hip, and funny, and it could translate to a TV program and so on." But I'm curious if we're gonna start to see. Like, let's keep an eye on that. All the members of the Thea, everybody listening right now, we'll have the convo on the Discord, of course. But we'll we'll keep an eye on things where if you start to see more examples in pop culture where they're starting to change the narrative of kind of like ushering her in to where they're priming you they're setting the table they're slowly going to persuade you and start to show the contrast of like literally in the code open they already said did nobody watch a shit your ratings suck and you're not who you used to be you old as fuck and it's like we used we were telling y'all this yeah none of y'all know this y'all just thought we were stupid trumpers when we're like bro this can't be it this cannot be it this ain't the guy I'm like, have y'all seen his little racist past in these old videos? They tried to fucking hide that shit. Like, y'all ain't heard about the laptop. They, uh, uh, oh, His son ain't running for president. Y'all were bending into a pretzel with fighting the cognitive dissonance of like, I literally remember once uh, listening to Scott Adams when he started saying like, you know, that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Hey, did y'all hear about the headline with Trump supposedly blah, 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 blah. But it was based on an anonymous source. And let's give it 72 hours and see, you know, things like that. I literally just felt that red pill. Like once I was like, he's right. He did not say drink bleach or whatever the one of the things the was. was. Yeah, where I was having to tell my soul like, hey, soul, um, you know how everybody's saying, you know, like the view and everybody is saying that supposedly he did this and that. But. If you look at it this way, you know what I mean? And it's like, huh. So that really was your huh moment, huh? Because I've heard you say that before. Like, the hoax is what was really yeah. made it clear for Literally, you. Literally, yeah. It was Scott Adams debunking hoaxes and explaining persuasion and hypnotism and mass brainwashing, explaining propaganda and how the media can use specific words and leave stuff out in context and just critical thinking and different type of logic to where... I literally felt the cognitive dissonance in my brain. I, like, I was presented with new information of somebody I hated, somebody I ain't like. Mm. I had Trump derangement syndrome. And all of a sudden, I'm presented with new information where I'm forced to reconcile my reality yeah. with what, like, what I'm seeing, what I thought I knew, now with new information. So now it's like, ah, oh, fuck. My brain just fucking like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Hard reset. Have you felt, have you ever felt that like cognitive dissonance where you're like, bro, are you telling me that Nelson Mandela, you know, the Mandela effect mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where it's like, wait, so he didn't, you know, wait. There's, there's a lot of examples of that for sure. And uh, at the beginning of the show, you brought up Crowder's um, mission, statement. mission statement video, which I think is really great. Uh, well, if you're a fan or not, go check it out. I think it's really good when it comes to learning about or thinking about how you're going to 
pursue independent media of any sort. It doesn't have to be political, just like anything that's away from the mainstream narrative, the corporate media, because it, they don't even call it mainstream anymore. I hear a lot of independent media calling it, it's the corporate media. I like that. I do too. I it's like very that reframing. It's very appropriate, right? So when Crowder was first on Rogan, this was five, six, maybe more years ago, to date, that had been Rogan's longest podcast. I think this was maybe, let's just say it was 2013, 14, something like that. It was like over five hours long. And Crowder's like a diehard Christian conservative. Something I can't necessarily, I'm not that person myself, but a lot of the things he says I, I, I jive with. So when he first went on, it was my first uh, introduction to him, right? And most, not most, but a lot of that five hours was talking about cannabis. Because Crowder's very anti-drugs, whether it's THC, whether it's anything, right? I don't know if his stance has changed over the years, but he's still very like, you shouldn't, you know, kids especially shouldn't be or if you're young. I, okay. So, to, motherfucker, I'm high right now. <laughs> so, up to that date, I had already worked with Adam Scorgi, right? I had produced his podcast remotely and we became buddies. He's produced two of the biggest pot documentaries in the world, The Union and The Culture High. I did the, the, the viewing here at Studio Movie Grill and I sold out the theater. We did a Q&A with Adam at the end of it. It was, you know, when Obama was in office, it was a big, big deal. It's an amazing documentary. And I, so when they started talking about that, he went in on how bad it was. And obviously Rogan's Mr. Cannabis himself. I immediately was like, I don't like this guy. You know, he, he went against my frame of thought when it came to, uh, to a subject that I didn't even, I didn't even consume a lot of THC ever, especially at that time. But I was like, of the mind that that should be available to anybody that wants it or needs it because it's just one of those basic, you know, it's a plan kind of thing. So anyway, long story short, as the conversation went on, he threw a lot of other, uh, I guess, red pills of sort for other things, whether it was social, you know, things or, or you know, whatever it was that it made me think, okay, I disagree with this one thing, but these other things make sense. Therefore, I must keep an open mind with this individual and other people going forward that, you know, that try to say that their thing is right and my thing is wrong and, you know, just break that, that feeling part. But at the same time, this is going to kind of contradict it. I think even Scott Adams says that's the only way to get people on your side is to first have them leave y'all's conversation with a way of not what did they teach me, but how did they make me feel? And I know Ben Shapiro's is facts don't care about your feelings, but when you frame it that way, it doesn't really garner a lot of uh, favor for you because you're not, you're not hitting p people where it matters most like overall if that makes sense like as a whole people usually want you to have them have you know feel better like have you make them feel better rather than feel bad obviously yeah. and then it what came to mind an interesting topic which is relevant to what we're talking about one one of these very interesting topics is like for example going back to the border for example all right so the rgv the real grand valley the the working class mexican americans down there they're obviously not on some, they can't deport us all shit no more. Right. Right? Because they done switch Republican. They're not crazy about these policies. They feel it firsthand, right? It brings down wages and all kinds of shit, right? Um, especially right now. Are they doing vaccine mandates to, for the illegal migrants? No. Um, but uh, meanwhile, citizens and Americans, they hitting you over the head. We want to see what's up with this 600. You know, they're all up in your grill and the IRS and you can't go here. Whatever. They really trying to push this vax passport. It's very, very, very scary. You know, y'all might as well just go live to China, in China then, or Australia, or New Zealand, where they really, you see that communism kicking in. But the topic of the border, I feel that that's one of those where I don't give a damn how lefty Larry and like open borders and like, oh my God, but pobrecito, the immigrants. And, you know, yes, it's so bad in Honduras that we're having to do this. Let them you don't have no one in your family that's not from here type of thing. Or this is native land. Right. Even some of those people are going to have to see what's on the way, what type of humanitarian crisis, how many women and kids get trafficked, how it's not sustainable, how a country just can't have. I mean, hey, I was Mr. Fucking let's invade them like a motherfucker, too. I, you know, I probably had the invasion begins, you know, Chingo Bling, new album or something. <laughs> right. But it's like. As a 42-year-old taxpayer, motherfucking concerned parent and shit, you about to see all kind of crime. Not, hey, sorry to break it to y'all, but Trump won lying when he said, they're not all good people. Most of them are good, I assume. You know, they're not sending their best. Like, you see how big this caravan is. You can't tell me ain't not one rapist 
Now, one little gang member, little drug dealer, fentanyl dealer, uh, MS-13, 18th Street, you know, ain't not one terrorist up in there, not one sex trafficker. Like, ain't nobody going to get exploited. Like, it, you know, the whole world is not just peaches and cream. I need, I need two computers to pull all these different things up. But did you see the article where uh, a lot of these groups were started on Facebook as far as like the, the caravans. Oh. So the argument is that is Facebook then complicit in human trafficking and smuggling and so on and so forth. They had QR codes made and they were putting up <laughs> posters and that's how these people were, which to me it's like, man, these people got these smart ass phones, they got QR code knowledge. But anyway, they're huddling up at whatever the you know place is and then they're all moving out. So basically Facebook is facilitating the organizing and the communication and the meetups and the chan- the, exactly. the message board type of I don't know exactly what all they got going on, but I think you could argue, hey Facebook, you're doing too much pimping. Yeah, like, maybe, maybe that's why they're changing the name. You saw that, right? I think they're changing the name. What what is the new name? Don't know yet. I think they're changing it. From what I heard, is because they're trying to get into that metaverse space, like this VR. Like basically, you're gonna wake up in the morning like Ready Player One. Put on your little headset and walk in this little virtual world like you inside a Nintendo. And that's how you go to work. And now you got this crypto in there and you you live in a second life. Basically, you you plugged into the Matrix and you live in a second life. And Facebook is about to change their whole direction and game plan to fit that space. So Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg is, is slated to testify before the House Energy and Commerce Committee Thursday, which is two days from re- when we record this, we'll talk about it Friday then, uh, about social media misinformation. The hearing will focus on how misinformation shared on social media about elections and coronavirus have grim consequences for public health and safety, the committee's chair said in a joint statement. AKA censorship. Just say it, Mark. Just say what it really is. like. What are they calling it? Committee for Misinformation? Well, it's the House Energy and Commerce Committee, and it's about media and misinformation. Which, AKA, what a weird committee to talk about. AKA to. big government getting together with big tech to figure out how to censor your motherfucking ass, all in the name of public health and safety. Do you think these people really believe that what they're doing is for the greater good? Some, some would argue that they use the noble lie and be like, Rob, can't you make the argument that people lying and saying weird stuff about very important things. Like, you know, we believe based on the data we've cherry picked that everyone should be vaccinated. Therefore, if you're on there talking about natural immunity, Rob, and you're on there saying, hey, maybe it's not a good idea due to myocarditis and stuff like that, that these kids don't take on unnecessary risk, that falls under misinformation to us, Rob. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to go ahead and shut your page off shadow ban you and good luck the migrants who largely originate from central america started joining facebook and whatsapp groups a month or wait in the months of after president joe biden defeated former president donald trump in the november election which I can't believe we're coming up on a year of that already according to reuters members of groups uh anyway yeah it just goes on to talk about how all these groups originated on facebook basically yeah just like a lot of the january 6th stuff and and everything else um Definitely going to keep an eye on that. I just, I think the biggest concern is how they're trying to use public health and safety as the excuse to take away a lot of your freedom of speech. That's what's coming, y'all. We weren't like this recently. A few years ago, you know, I guess big tech is having to mash the gas for whatever reason to fit their agenda. You know what I'm saying? To help big big government not demonopolize them and, and so on to stay on the subject actually did you see the project veritas video of uh governor murphy what they leaked from his uh for the the fucking what is that jersey is that new jersey so what is it they who leaked what project veritas okay leaked, leaked a uh internal video from somebody inside of his re-election you know oh, here wow. let me pull it up because it's it's in the same kind of conversation of what we're saying and this is the kind of Raza or Latina or whatever the fuck she is that kind of goes with what we're talking about as far as her uh, Governor Murphy re-election campaign. Okay. He's trying to do mandates. Project Veritas has obtained hidden camera recordings inside Governor Phil Murphy's campaign. Yeah, New Jersey. Including from a senior advisor. La vaccine mandates. Como California, que está el mandato que todo el mundo tiene que tener la vacuna. Eh, lo va a hacer, pero no puede hacer, no podía hacerlo antes de la elección. 
porque si no, no se tira todo lo independent y lo undecided Mm -hmm. The dependent decides would not vote for him if he did the band. Wait for this part. Because they're on two other sh My rights, my sh And they don't care that they kill everybody. Well, that, see, that's good to know then. That after he wins, then he'll do the mandates. Mm -hmm. The vaccine mandates. He will. But right now it's about him winning. It'll be, it'll be fine. If delaying these mandates can really wait until after the election, are they really about public mm. safety, Governor Murphy? That makes me that made me so infuriated last night when I saw that because yeah. that's going on all around the country and uh, all these people are into their shit, their freedom, my and their rights, shit, my rights shit. and my shit. My, oh my god, mira, mira. that made me so mad. Mira, mira, I'm American. First Amendment, Second Amendment, you know, guy uh, with their my constitution <laughs> shit. Dude, that was that's so infuriating. <laughs> bro, the system, bro. It, it All right, you know how Steve Bannon be saying like we need to be uh chairman committee men or whatever that shit is like your local yeah. like from the ground up, right? You know, basically take over the Republican Party with like actual America first type people, not these fucking rhinos. It's unfortunate that it's either you can get mad and upset and just throw your hands up and get demoralized. Like, damn, man, the game ain't fair. Look at these how these politicians play with our lives, bro. Playing with people's livelihoods, force, forcing you to get a shot, you know, regardless of what your reasoning is. No, no, no. You think you can kill everybody? No. But mira, we're going to get elected first and then los mandates. Toma. So here's, 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 uh, let me just break it down this way. Why is it always the Democrats? Damn near. I know there's a lot of rhinos probably be on some fuck shit. But overall, Democrats have become the party of mandates. The party of like, ay, mira, mocking freedom. Mira, mira, my, my body, my choice. That's pendejo. <laughs> Chingue su madre, mandates. So why is it the Democrats that have morphed into the party of well, I guess maybe they've been like this for a long time, but now they really mashing the gas. They are in your face, in your grill about you. Yes, you are obligated. We're forcing you. Well, as the party of like social programs, right? And social whatever, you would have to think that if you want these social programs, if you want this aid, this help, this whatever it is, you got to do what we say. You can't have the, the alleged free stuff or potential free stuff. Yeah, but they're not they're not saying... If you want welfare and stuff like that. Not yet. No, what they're doing right now is if you want to have a job, if you're a worker, if you're an employee, if you're a fireman, if you're a nurse, if you're a pilot. Well, yeah, because it starts with that. Imagine that. You have a job, a career, or whatever. And if those people you know, are willing to uh, give in, then imagine the people that don't have the careers, jobs, or whatever, and have you know, almost nothing to lose. They're like, they already have just, I, I need, to give, I need to, you to give me what I'm already barely getting. These mandates are like such a big deal. And, you know, to other comedians out there, it's like, I know, you know, I get it, man. We're comedians. You know, we just want to focus on that. I mean, I'm just going to focus on the funny. You know, there's a lot of other stuff to make fun of. You know, but we have a podcast too. I'm not just a comedian. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've always been just an artist and I've always expressed myself, you know, and my opinion evolves. But just as a citizen and just as a member of the community, as a public person, it's almost like I feel a moral obligation to be like, hey, guys, I know this shit ain't funny. And uh, it's not like, you know, hey, I'm going to put on a wig and do a character type shit. But it's like, oh, can we talk about these mandates right quick? Because it's affecting a lot of people's communities, jobs, families, lives like my dad's a fireman and they're going to force him to take this shot so that he can still provide. Or like my mommy's a nurse, you know, and now my mommy and my dad, I heard them having a discussion that, you know, since I'm six years old now, they about to approve it for my age group and we often to be jabbed up up in here. It's like, how did we arrive in this place where big tech is coming out saying we're going to talk about misinformation and it's trippy Dude, you're trippy. just feeling like whoa in a corner almost like this is an interesting time to be alive um it is it's one of the best yeah. times because we do have these dis you know despite them being very uh sensor heavy we still have these platforms where if we do it right and with the right the right kind of uh distribution by proxy it can really really it can cause a wave right it can cause a ripple in in the the culture i guess or in the in the country or the whole world really but 
you got to be careful. You got to tiptoe. You can't just go out there and be, you know, what the, whatever these late night hosts are. Go ahead. Oh, no, 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 no. I feel you. Like, basically, don't trip out the algorithm because then we get kicked off. Yeah. Um, that's why we need to go viral. Yeah. We need y'all to share, like, some of the stuff I said earlier. I, I want to make sure I, I make a mental note and we clip it out or something. But it's it's like some of this stuff has to be discussed. I get it. A lot of times people like to tune out. No, 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 no politics. No, 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 no. I don't like that. And it's almost like they made it boring on purpose. They, they, made, sure. it, they made it stuffy on purpose because... They don't want you to be a politically literate and understand like, OK, so I hear the argument that mandates are necessary and I'm hearing about this Vax passport and like normally it's hypothetical, right? Normally, I'm not against technology and the government already makes us do a lot of stuff. But, you know, Rob and Chingo, you know, they, they, they you know, they look like me with the same kind of age group from the same area. I'm, I'm kind of curious why they're so against it. You know, and you start to break down like, look, man, this is how they live in China, bro. It's all QR code everywhere. It's super surveillance, less freedoms. They monitor in every little thing. You are ruled by artificial intelligence. It's too much power in this big government. They all up in your business over every little thing. And I like the meme you posted on what did he said, the at what did he said page where uh, we should probably read it. It's like it's the year 2049. You oh. just you just got full off your cricket paste for your <laughs> daily protein. I mean, Bro, this shit don't sound that far fetched. Like, I mean, damn, bro. Every day you gotta fight with like not sounding like a complete like a complete kooky person, you know, and and just kind of come off as a like I'm keeping an open mind. Don't worry, I'm also seeing both sides. I'm trying to be logical. Maybe I go a little bit off in left field, but it's a little necessary to like form a new idea or a new perspective of all these different things going on. And then you have those that just go full one side or the other. And like that's super dangerous as well. We're never saying to do that. I'm not ever saying to do that. But you got to question things. Yeah. And you got to convince me, hold on, bro. Why all of a sudden we need mandates? Because last time I checked, never in the history of all history have we quarantined the unsick. We quarantined everybody across the board and we all had to shut down. Who did it first? Was it Xi Jinping? Or the CCP in China, he, did they do it first? And then they convinced the rest of the world to be like, hey, y'all, this shit worked for us. Just do it. Just tell them. They don't know nothing about this virus. Just scare the shit out of them and just tell them it's just 14 days. Go. Boom. All right, local. Da, 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 the Democratic Party, we, we falling in line, in lockstep. All right, now check this out. The year is 2040. You're eating from your weekly rationed tube of cricket paste in your self-driving electric car that only allows you to get to work and back. You get home and greeted by your non-binary they friend as your child comes in saying, thinking is a crime. <laughs> Come on, man. That's a very dystopian <laughs> future. That is very scary. That is beyond Mad Max. And te technology is so alluring. Technology is so... It's so fun and cool and, and convenient. Like, mm -hmm. wow, I can monitor. Oh, my God, I'm so blessed that I can monitor my heart rate and I can keep track of what I'm eating on this app. And then my car knows how to do this and it alerts me with this. All that shit's cool. But why all of a sudden we got to live according to the Vax passport? And we got to check in everywhere. And all of a sudden you got to earn back your freedom and your rights. And, oh, you want to hop on a plane? Oh, well, you got to put this in your body and pr produce this and show this and that. Did you see Lex Freeman's post? Do you follow Lex Freeman? By oh, chance? yeah. What did he put? This one? Did you see that one? Oh, what was he showing? Some AI? It was a new, uh, like a new Pixel phone. It was like a new Samsung. And it already mapped his face out. Dude, the whole thing. <laughs> so yeah. all his biometrics. Everything. It's, it's crazy. And so, he's, he's an MIT. He's a genius, right? Essentially. And I'm for, I love technology. But if, if, if we didn't know what we know and if things that are coming out weren't coming out about how, you know, just how much fuckery there is, whether it's from the Patriot Act or from anything that the government's ever put their little toe in, I wouldn't be worried about it. But because we know that stuff, this is scary as hell. It's almost like they'd be like, yo, Xi Jinping, man, why y'all like Muslims over here, bro? Why y'all so anti-Muslim? And he's like, they be covering up their face too much, pimpin'. <laughs> They trying to work around our computers. Yo, Sam Tripoli. I didn't know where you were going with that. Yo, Sam Tripoli has a joke. Yeah. Shout out to Sam. I don't want to give away your jokes, but goddamn, this <laughs> motherfucker right now. He was like, yo, the technology, he's a master. You yeah. got to see him live. Yeah, he's great. He's like, dude, the fucking uh, uh, artificial intelligence, the surveillance over there in China, 
you know, the facial recognition is so good, it could tell Chinese people apart. Boom! <laughs> oh! It was like a Gervonta Davis left uppercut from down low. Boss! We should talk about boxing on Chingo Chats. Okay, yeah. Because I've been watching a lot of shit on YouTube. Badass. Getting ready for this uh, Canelo fight or what? Yes, I will be at the Houston Improv. Um, to all the Canelo fans, don't worry. You can watch him on, on replay. <laughs> I'm live. You know what I'm saying? You got to see it in the flesh. Um, yeah, but again, shout out to Sam Tripley, man. When I was listening to him when he was doing the Naughty Show at the Ice House 10 years ago, like starting his podcast where Rogan you know, started their podcast in the uh, the original, yeah, the Ice House like green room or some shit. He'd have, who, who started their podcast in the green room? Rogan started Death Squad Studios, like the first Death Squad Studios in the Ice House in, I guess, is it Pasadena, I think, at the club's at? And um, that's where they would have, it was like a round table of, of, of guests. It would be like, you know, Sam would come on and then Bert and you know, all these people would come in and it turned into like the Death Squad Chronicles. And that was the time where I met Adam Scorgi and a bunch of people on Twitter and Sam, man, Sam was, you know, he'd have strippers on and all these crazy people from the porn industry and just like adult, you know, actresses and comedians and crazy crazy stories and shit but he's been doing it for as long as all of them he's been doing it for just as long as rogan has been doing it yeah it's paying off too i, I know he just did a uh, episode 500 of uh tim four yeah he has multiple shows you can catch him on rockfin uh we might even have a show on rockfin soon one day but we want to make sure that you know this is episode 100 um we want to make sure that kind of like on some steve crowder shit like are you going to put out quality product and you're just going to spread thin you know what I mean? Which one you gonna do? Yeah. You gonna stick to the the main shows you have? Cause I don't feel like it's time to just go crazy and already be like, man, I got it, man, I got a show for this, and we got one. We just talk music. We got one. We just talk comedy. We got one. This is this and health and fitness and one about money and crypto and it. Yeah. So one day, see those kidding. All right, should we move on to the uh, Boston Celtics? Yeah, man, let's. How do you say his name? Enos Cantor. That's what I. That's what I said. All right, we're gonna figure out the pronunciation, but. Is he Muslim? I believe he is. I'm assuming. He's of some kind of descent, I think. Some kind of descent. Turkish, maybe? I don't know. He from somewhere. <laughs> that motherfucker, he, he mixed with something. <laughs> he got something in him. He from over there somewhere. Anyway, we don't know where the motherfucker from, but he plays for the Boston Celtics, and he's been wearing these shoes, like yeah. custom hand-painted shoes, where he's talking about Tibet and Free the Uyghurs, and then he did a video. was like, Xi Jinping, you a, you know... I'm quoting now, she. Yeah, quoting. Y'all know what he said. Somebody look it up so I'm I'm not in the gulag over here in the motherfucking FEMA re-education camp. But they already talk about them education camps. But anyway. Anytime it says re-education, you should probably. Bro, they already talking about that shit. Perk your ears up a little bit. Yeah, he was wearing these. He's worn these a couple of times. And he was wearing it most recently on Sunday when they played the Rockets. (laughs) Uh, He's putting the NBA in a tight spot. Oh, yeah. He's going to play. NBA scared. And that is true. Yes, you are. Here in the He's United talking about Nike, States, so rewind it. Mm. Nike stands with the Black Lives Matter. One more Matter. time. Dear Nike, your company says that you are making a positive impact in our communities. And that is true. Yes, you are. Here in the United States, Nike stands with the Black Lives Matter. Nike stands with Stop Asian Hate. Nike stands with the Latino community. And Nike stands with the LGBTQ community. And Nike remains vocal about injustice here in America. But when it comes to China, Nike remains silent. You do not address police brutality in China. You do not speak about discrimination against the LGBTQ community. You do not say a word about the oppression of minorities in China. You are scared to speak up. Mm. Who makes your shoes in China? Do you even know? There are so many forced labor factories in China. For instance, Uyghur forced labor in modern day slavery, and it is happening right now in China. Millions of Uyghurs are currently detained, sold, and assigned to work at forced labor camps, prisons, and factories across the country. They are are under constant surveillance Mm. with long working hours and poor living conditions. They are subject to political re-education. They have no freedom of expression, no freedom of religion, and they are not even able to leave. Did you know that almost the entire imperial 
and footwear industry is tainted by Uyghur, Uyghur forced labor. Many well-known global brands are implicated, and yes, that includes the one of the NBA's biggest sponsors, Nike. Nike claims that they do not allow any forced labor in their supply chains, yet they don't have the receipt to prove it. They have not publicly committed to cutting ties with the Chinese government's labor transfer scheme. They have not provided clear timelines or updates about their efforts to end this. They have not publicly committed to the steps outlined by the coalition to end Uyghur forced labor. Don't forget, every time you put those shoes on your feet or you put that t-shirt on your back, there are so many tears and so much oppression and so much blood behind it all. Like you like to say, just do it. Well, what are you doing about the slave labor that makes your shoes? Mm. That slave labor that makes you rich. To the owner of Nike, Phil Knight, I have a message for you. How about I book a plane tickets for us? Let's fly, let's fly to China together. We can try to visit these slave labor camps and you can see it with your own eyes. LeBron James and Michael Jordan, you guys are welcome to come too. Nike must be a participant in this. Stop with hypocrisy. Stop the modern day slavery now. Oof. This is my favorite ball player now, brother. Sorry, Hakeem Olajuwon. Um, I, you know what, man? Me personally, look here. Right now, I'm wearing Nike shorts. But from now on, I don't see myself buying no Nike. Now, all my kids going to have Nike. See, now I can't control what my wife buys these kids. But me personally, I don't envision myself buying no new Nike no more. From this day forward, um powerful statement he's keeping it real he's basically saying y'all full of shit and i also heard that kanye wanted to build a united states manufacturing for some of those adidas yeezy um i think it's the one that look like crocs oh, the little yeah, like yeah. Mm -hmm. funky looking croc rubber like one piece shoe american manufacturing bro that's something trump was trying to do that's how trump became friends with mike lindell because it was like Oh, this is the pillow dude. He makes all the pillows in Minnesota. Around the time, I think it was like 2015, he put out an infomercial where he mentioned that fact on the commercial. And at the time, people were really resonating, like all these areas, like, you know, your, your Rust Belt, Pennsylvania, and all these like American places really started to resonate with, hey, man, our jobs got shipped. You know, we used to be the steel. We used to have, the, now we're the Rust Belt. We used to build cars here. You know, America used to actually know how to do some shit. So a lot of people resonated with this. It caught Trump, the Trump campaign's uh, eye. And I would love to see Yeezy, like somebody. Why don't I, somebody um, inform me? Like, okay, Chingo, here's a list of uh, shoemakers. The boots that I bought, my wife got me for my H, the HBO thing we shot. Mm -hmm. It's like, I think, a Texas-made, super comfy and shit. Um, maybe we can, in the Discord or, or hit us in the comments... If there's a list of like our red wing boots made here, like what are some American made products? That's something that I feel like we really, right now I'm shadow banned, so it's hard for me to get the word out. But that's, dude, people need to know just to put it in their brains, even if it's just to plant a seed. Like, you know what? I never really thought about when I go to Walmart or Target or anywhere and you buying toys and like, you ever just sit in a Halloween spirit store and look around and think, all this comes from China. All them containers that's coming from where? China. They make everything. So shout out to Mike Lindell, my pillow, made in America. Hopefully Yeezy can start getting those um, Adidas and things made here. Let's get a list going of American-made products. Um, I think tonight we're supposed to go live to promote the, uh, the snack boxes mm -hmm. edition, too. And make that bitch like QVC. But a lot of those products are like American made, local, things like that. Uh, let's watch the video. This one's the one that originally went viral, I believe. Great. This is Not all of it, because he talks really slow. Right now. right now, as I speak this message, torture, rape, forced abortions, and sterilizations, family separations, arbitrary detentions, concentration camps, political re-education, Mm. forced labor this is all happening right now 
to more than 1.8 million Uyghurs in the Xinjiang region in northern western China. Uyghurs are a Turkic Muslim ethnic group native to the Uyghur region. The Chinese government has been taking sweeping measures to crack down on the Uyghur people simply because they embrace their own religion, their own culture, language, history, and identity. The Uyghur region has become an open air prison. Yeah, yeah pause right there. Rebellion. You're going to have to rewind this bitch about 20 seconds so people can hear that part again. He, he's, he's saying China don't play when it comes to the culture war. China don't want a whole bunch of religions. They don't want to hope, oh, you over there. Y'all, first of all, they even look different. They have a different religion and all that. And then he's, sorry, uh, Enos, I cut you off. But listen to what he's saying. He's about to tell you how the, uh, did he say Xinjiang province? I, I can't remember the area. But um, it's an open air prison. And that's what a vaccine passport does. You already have all these little cameras and shit. You, they're already loaded up with AI and facial recognition over there. All it takes is one crooked politician to bring it over here. And it's an open air prison. Everywhere you go, all your moves, everything monitored. And that's how those people live. And that's how they get disappeared. And when uh, independent journalists try to go out there and be like, you know, we're here undercover. Boom. The police are on you right away because they watching from yep. Beijing somewhere. All right, here we go again. In the Xinjiang region in northern western China. Uyghurs are a Turkic Muslim ethnic group native to the Uyghur region. The Chinese government has been taking sweeping measures to crack down on the Uyghur people simply because they embrace their own religion, their own culture, language, history, and identity. The Uyghur region has become an open air prison, a surveillance state where freedoms are non existent for the Uyghur people. The Chinese government has sent Uyghurs along with Kazakhs, Tajiks, and other Muslim groups to concentration camps for simply applying for a passport, for texting someone overseas, or for believing in anything that does not align with the Chinese Communist Party's agenda. Anyone and everyone, athletes, doctors, poets, intellectuals, musicians, community leaders, you name it, are currently suffering inside these camps where the Chinese government is conducting unimaginable human rights abuses and crimes against humanity. All of us must spread the word and call on the Chinese government for free the Uyghur people. It is so disappointing that the governments and leaders of Muslim majority countries are staying silent while my Muslim brothers and sisters are getting killed, raped, and tortured. I'm talking about you, Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan. Saudi King Salman, United Arab Emirates Mohammed bin Zayed, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi. It's shameful and sad how you have decided to prioritize money and business with China over human rights. You call yourself Muslims, but you are just using that for show. You simply do not care about people. And this goes to fellow Muslim athletes as well. Why are you staying silent? Mohammed Salah, Karim Abdul Jabbar, Amir Khan, say something, do something, speak up. Your silence and your inaction is complicit. To those of you watching who care about human dignity, please join me in spreading the word. What is happening to the Uyghurs is one of the worst human rights abuses in the world today. We cannot stay silent. Heartless dictator of China, Xi Jinping, and the Communist Party of China. I'm calling you out right now in front of the whole world. Close down the slave labor camps and free the Uyghur people. Stop the genocide now. Jeez. This boy is a gangster, bro. <sighs> LeBron would never have the nuts to say nothing like this. This dude, I respect this dude. Make sure y'all go follow him. Enos Cantor is saying... What a lot of people know, what a lot of conservatives, Republicans, you know, you know, the crazy Trumpers. Why? Oh, it's just because they don't they don't agree with everything China trying to do. He's letting y'all know how these people play. 
He's calling them out. Hey, man, y'all a transnational criminal organization. Y'all are not legitimate. And y'all trying to use y'all's influence because of business and all that. And y'all turning, y'all, y'all's taking y'all's ways of this crazy communist surveillance dystopian future. And y'all trying to bring it to New Zealand, Australia, Canada. And it's surrounding us. And half the country here is, is sleepwalking. You got sheep. You know, a lot of liberal, progressive people, people that voted for Biden, they're not even paying attention to the threat. And that's one of the things we've been telling y'all is we've been why you always hear us talking about China. <laughs> but props to this athlete. China. Props to this props to this athlete, man. You know, let's talk about that a little bit. When he calls out these other athletes that are like, you know, Muslim athletes or whoever or whatever. Um I thought he was gonna say Muhammad Ali. And it's like, <laughs> hey, hold on, motherfucker, he dead. <laughs> Um, and he's like, why aren't you speaking up? It, it kind of goes into the, the, into the realm of like, once a human has the things that they've always wanted or needed and their family has everything they want or needed, it's really hard to convince them or even more so a collective to just rise up, right? Because really who has the power in all these situations? It is the people like all, if every Boston Celtics stopped playing, you know, to bring attention to whatever. And, yeah. And if we had like, let's just pretend Trump was in office. And he already had he already had beef, mm-hmm. right? He was doing the tariff war. He was pushing back. He was push, pulling out of the Paris Climate Accord. He's not full, he wasn't fully convinced as many people are with this, you know, <clears throat> dare I say, climate narrative, right? right? Where basically we all got to go electric. We got to make sure China gets all the jobs and they get to pollute and they make the batteries for the cars and, and so, yada yada yada. Um, whew, let's just pretend that. More athletes are informed and have the nuts to stand up. It's scary. I mean, because, I, hey, they risking their check, their popularity. Stephen A. Smith going to get on your ass. They going to Kyrie you to death. Um, you know, all of a sudden, the propaganda machine might turn on you. Why? Because China got a lot of control over here uh, through politicians. And arguably, this regime is bought and paid for by them. So we shall keep an eye on it. Um, like I said, I don't really see myself buying no Nike. I'm I'm a really try to go around it. Like, is there another shoe? You know what I mean? Is it something else? What what Adidas got? Who 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 who's American made? Who who who? Yeah, I do want to find a good American brand. Um, Lululemon. Did, I think they're Canadian. Are they? Well, they're letting. They're, speaking of another people, they're just letting shit happen to them. What happened to them? In Canada? I mean, oh Canada. I thought you were talking about Lululemon. No. I was like, don't you talk down on Lulu. Uh, I want to cut, you know, we're going to go long because it's our 100th episode. So you're welcome, everybody listening. Also, Enos, your cameraman covered up the fucking microphone for half the video. Yeah, I noticed. All of a sudden it got clear. <laughs> um, but hey, in summary, man, it was very inspiring to see someone put it out there and speak their truth and say, Hey, guys, y'all know what's going on. Why is everybody so silent? This needs to end now. But unfortunately, it probably will not. If uh, if what's his face? What was the other guy? Black guy with the fro that was also a quarterback? Uh, Kaepernick. Kaepernick. If Kaepernick got all this attention no, and all these endorsements, you know, especially from Nike. You really think, wait, that's a great question. Thank you for bringing him up. Is Kaepernick going to say something? He is Mr. Just Do It. He's Mr. BLM Just Do It. He ain't he ain't Mr. He ain't even playing for nobody, right? No. So he ain't got nothing but Nike. Even when he was playing, he wasn't playing. He went woke uh, to get a check. So let's see if there's don't he got white parents and shit? Maybe half. Something like that. He's on some fucking critical race theory looking at. Aaron Rodgers said, I'm not a part of woke cancel culture. I wanted to find a video. Aaron Rodgers went in on, on cancel culture on a podcast recently. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Watch out now. And, and he's a white male. This they about nice. to be on your ass. You're gonna be in a re-education camp. Oh, maybe this is it. <clears throat> they gonna have to. They gonna have you memorizing a hundred pronouns. And you telling a city that you own them when you're 22 and five against them? Fucking some of the greatest competitive trash talk in the history of trash talk. Well, back when I first got in the league and when I grew up watching it, I feel like trash talk was a little more normalized and. You didn't have to, you know, apologize if you said something that offended, you know, a few people <laughs> in a city. And, you know, like I said, I mean, I have a lot of respect for the for the city and and for the sports fans. It's been a great rivalry over the years. Thank you. But we have gotten the better of them for for a while now. I mean, I don't think I was saying anything that wasn't 
necessarily close to the truth. If you don't like it, that's fine. That's your prerogative. But let me just clear up one thing as well that you were talking about. Like, I'm so fortunate for this platform, especially this one, to be on here talking with you guys. Like, it means a lot to me because I think people get to see me in a little bit of a different light. You know, that I'm not a repeating robot, cliche ridden uh, leader of a franchise. I actually have a personality and thoughts and opinions that uh, I think align with most people. Um, but I'm not a victim either. I'm not a victim. I don't look at myself as a victim or I don't want people to feel bad for me because of uh, the spotlight that I'm in and the platform that I have and the and the scrutiny that comes with it. I accept all of it. I really do. I don't have a problem with it. Um, I just think that it is, for me, helps me to uh, keep sane when I can recognize and point out that there is this culture that exists that gets off, I think, on... Uh, keep shrinking people, keeping them small, keeping them in a box, uh, quieting them through uh, cancelization or demeaning comments, and that I also exist outside of that in a different realm where um, I do feel confident in things I say and I do stand behind what I do, and I like to speak the truth, and I'm not a part of this, uh, you know, uh, woke uh, cancel culture that gets off on. Uh, trying to silence people all the time. Hey, shout out Pat McAfee, too. Pat McAfee, if you guys don't know, he's got a great podcast. He's one of the OGs of podcasting as well. He used to be a part of the Barstool crew, and then they, they split ways. He was a great kicker and punter for the Indianapolis Colts. Great, great personality on social media. But Aaron Rodgers, too, I've never heard him really talk like, you know, long form. That's a great, that's what I'm talking about. That's another one of these star athletes, Aaron fucking Rodgers. Yeah, he better watch out. They're going to be like, hey, white boy, you better slow down. <laughs> They're going to label you KKK. You keep talking all that freedom shit. You keep speaking out, talking about, man, I'm not with all that cancel culture. Oh, what'd you say, white boy? What'd you, oh, you thought, oh, you thought you had, a, you were, oh, no, we'll just label you racist. Let us find a false narrative. I'm so glad I'm not a white male for that reason. <laughs> yeah. Because it's already hard watching everything you say. And if you was white male, you'd have to be just, man, you know, I mean, you know, I was just, uh, they'd be like, hey, hey, white man, what you think about what Enos Cantor said? Well, um, I guess that's different, right? Because it's China, but you don't want to sound like a Trumper. Saying, God forbid you sound like a Trumper. Like, like, for example, stop being mad at Rogan for beating the Rona and start, we should start being more concerned as to how did this shit come about? Did it leak on purpose or by accident? And what the fuck? And why the fuck Fauci still got a job, man? This man over there torturing beagles, ripping out their vocal cords. Let's uh, let's wrap up with the topic of Andrew Schultz. He okay. got hit with some big tech censorship himself. Yeah, I heard him talking about it on the podcast, Flagrant 2. Shout out to Schultz and the whole crew, uh, Akash Singh. And uh, so Schultz was talking, and he was like, hey, man, I lost the link sticker. Which like, is the old swipe up. Yeah, to where on your story on Instagram, you had the ability to tell someone, hey guys, I'm going to be in Irvine, California, uh, November 3rd, and swipe up for the tickets. Well, they took that away. Why was he penalized? Apparently, he made a post or a comment. About, about a model or something? Yeah, and he, he couldn't even, I mean, he didn't really go into detail as to like what all it was. He's yeah. like, something I really don't even care about, but we just talk shit, and he's like, a story that I chimed in on that... Um, he's like, I would have forgot about in 15 minutes. Right. So it's very unfortunate that you're trying to hurt people's pockets and you're penalizing them and you're trying to like de de incentivize free thought. It's like the damn thought police. And like, y'all hear the frustration with me. Anytime I go live, like, literally every time I post, I'm like, what's the point? Ain't nobody gonna see it. And sure enough, all the comments are like, man, I ain't been seeing your shit. Even Schultz told me because I texted him, I was like, hey, they took away your your thing. I was like, that's fucked up. He's like, how'd you know? I said, I heard you say it on a goddamn podcast. <laughs> and um, he's like, and then I was like, man, I'm shadow banned. He's fucking big tech oligarchs, tyrants. And, if, and he's like, yeah, I haven't been seeing your shit. It usually will come up pretty regularly. And I wonder why. I don't even know. I don't know what I said. I don't know what I did. Well, actually, one of the things was a, a meme where it was the little dude, like he's riding his girl. <laughs> and it's like, this is how dudes have sex that are against Second Amendment. That, that fucking meme, guys, has, has haunted Chingo for months now. Because it originally started on Facebook. That was the day you got the 24-hour ban. Yeah, because I left. I was leaving it as comments to motherfuckers too. Bah, bitch. Because Facebook in the comments, you're able to put a gif and a, right. and a meme and shit like that. He, he posted that. I get here to record that day. He's like, man, I lost my Facebook account. I was like, what? And just like that, overnight, they were like, it's gone. And then somehow we, I don't know. You got It, was, it turned into a 24-hour ban after you, uh, what do you call it, appealed it, I guess. And you know what, though? 
I'm not a shadow band anymore on my Facebook. Maybe it's because I got like over a million followers on there mm-hmm. that to where it's kind of like, well, technically you still kind of are. Right. But I can't complain because I guess, I don't know, we've been posting good shit and it's breaking the um, firewall somehow. But yeah, Instagram, I'm pretty suppressed on there. Uh, join the newsletter. Stay ahead of the censors. All right. So Schultz, um, they talked about it on their podcast and they made some excellent points because... It's like a chilling effect. It's like now you're having to think twice before you say any little thing. And you're supposed to be a comedian. You're supposed to be able to, like, this is America. It's 2021. Like, I know. And, of course, the argument is, well, you know, Instagram is a private company. And they can have their terms and conditions. And you just got to play within the rules and color within the lines. But at the same time, it's like, bro, y'all are like the thought police. Like, you label anything misinformation. You don't really have a human over there that can explain to you, like, all right, man, the shadow ban will get lifted if you just stop doing X, Y, Z for X amount of time. And then you, or like, can we pay bail? You know what I'm saying? Can, can we pay? <laughs> can I just pay a little fee? Like, here, man, here, man, here go a couple hundred dollars. You know, something. like, you play Monopoly before? Yeah, of course. So, you know, you, you know, you get out of jail free card or you can pay $50 to not have to roll uh, doubles three times to get out of jail. Like, what if they were like, all right, Chingo. You know, it's it's whatever strike, even if it's your first or fifth strike, it's it's fifty dollars every time, and after your fifth strike, it's a hundred dollars if you want to not be shadow banned. People would do it. People would pay for it. Yeah, but then they got to start really telling you, like, really, bro, it's because you put the Enos Cantor video on your shit, and you know, you know, man, we trying to break into China, we trying to get in over there, so they kind of told us, you know, what I mean, like, I literally wonder if they have, um, if the AI, I'm very very curious if anybody. Like, works over there. I'm pretty sure they got some whistleblowers and shit, but <laughs> Project Veritas. But, like, if somebody could explain to me or us, hey, guys, this is, uh, I dug deep in the code and I'm a nerd and this and that. But, like, is it a program where they put different words in there? Like, all right, if any combination of these things pops up more than 45% of the time in and or comments and captions like hashtag let's go Brandon mm. uh, free to Uyghurs you know motherfucking clowning Biden like what's what are the trigger words you know they clowning pronouns like what all what do y'all put into the artificial intelligence to teach it what right. to what triggers what's triggering the algorithm to where it's like eh Lost your link sticker. Right. Can't talk about that. Because <clears throat> you know they do that. You know that's a part of the algorithm. It like, has to be. People are pulling levers, you know, left and right on different things. But there's so many people constantly posting things every day on these platforms that the algorithms also have to be programmed to be like, okay, they posted it 10 times today. Or they've used that hashtag 10 times total this week. Go ahead and throttle them back. Don't let their post be seen. Teach them a lesson. Yeah. Rough them up a little bit. Yeah. Give Chingo an extra month because he just doesn't yeah. know when to stop. Yeah. He keeps saying free to Uyghurs and shit like that. We don't like that shit. He keeps saying don't buy Nike. That lo- yeah. That, I was getting DMs in my at my Rob GTV on Instagram about man, get your boy Chingo some uh, high blood pressure medicine. He's going in on Instagram. Oh man. Oh, talking about you're live yesterday. Oh really? Yeah. Damn, was that bad? Do you not remember it? No, I don't remember me being high blood pressure. I just thought I was being animated on live. You definitely were being animated, but you were being animated the way you were last week on the podcast, where it's like, what's the point of me being on this platform, Okay, huh? yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's frustrating. And the reason I went live, because mm-hmm. it's like, Nothing if I works. go live right now, will they let it be seen? Let's test it out. And it's such a waste of energy, because it's like, you know, this is just one fucking platform. You have no control. Yeah. But it's like... What do we do? Do I just delete it? Do I just shut it down? Do I hand it over to someone else? Like, it's very demoralizing that they really don't give you a lot of info. Yeah. And you can't pay bail. I'm locked up. Uh, Episode 100, Chingo. We made it. (laughs) And a year later, we're here. We're about to hit the holidays. We'll probably chat about that on Chingo Chats. November 3rd, round the corner. Yep. Um, Dark winter, round the corner. Christmas shelves. What's up with the shelves? What's up with that? Did you? uh, I sent you that app earlier this morning. Did you see it? Did you look into it? Did you click it? What app? I sent you a text. God damn it. This is why. How do you take the little moon? There's a moon. Why am I asleep on your phone? I don't even know how to undo it. No. You're only asleep, I think, sometimes... It's on Frank's sleep too. You're asleep only on the group text with Mighty Soul and Rob. So you sent it just to me? No, I sent it to both of y'all because I wanted to. That's both why y'all. I didn't see. Okay. 
Okay, let me see. Oh, Spotify Green Room? Yeah, man. What is it? Uh, well, if you would have read it seven hours ago, you would know what it is by now, so we can talk about Ooh, it. Stop, madre. <laughs> No, okay, I'll, yeah, Spotify's I'll, trying to breed Apple in the podcast space. Yeah, so let me sum it up for everybody. I would suggest, I, I downloaded it and I set it up. Did you ever get into Clubhouse when it was like popping a couple months ago? <sighs> no. Okay, I didn't either. That's what it looks like. That's basically what it is. Um. But, because, but, you know, and Twitter has it too. I think they call it uh, sp Spaces, which is such a stupid name because Safe Spaces is where you, you know, you think of Twitter. Um, Facebook has Rooms, I think, and then uh, Spotify has Green Rooms. So the Spotify Green Room app is basically one of these uh, platforms where it's like an open open talk, open space, kind of like uh, open conversation. I like what Spotify is doing because they're already such a big player in the podcast game. You know that they want to supersede Apple. They want to take over that space. They want to be like the commanding you know, lead or leader in it. And um, it released la a year ago, like this month, but it really started popping off about a month or two ago. And it's just a place where you create your own channel, your own room. You can have up to a thousand people in there, and it's just different topics. And we talked about chingo, we talked about music on Chingo Chats, the last one. So we could be, and I want to come up with these ideas, and maybe we'll chat about it in the Patreon. We'll, I'll make a post about it, or you can make a post about it, and we'll see what people think, or in the Discord, where it's a way for people to interact in a live setting. So you can go live, or you and I can go live in the room, and people come in and join in, and they can hear us. They can, you know, they can even ask to talk in the room, or they can chat in the in the in the window. And it's just like uh, maybe actual green room, like before we record a podcast or after or on a day that we don't record a podcast, you go live on the green room and you talk about music, you talk about what this, what was it, this fucking uh, Alalfa or whatever else kind of, you know, music, or we talk about whatever it is, but mm -hmm. it's like another platform that might warrant itself to like an audience, you know, enjoying what, what we do or you do on there. Huh interesting and get in there uh, that's why i said to get in early so y'all can go sign up use your name and then edit your profile and get whatever at you want so like how'd you at. hear about this i always try to you know stay on top of what's okay. going on all right um it's called green room spotify yeah. green room if you're interested yeah it'd be cool if we can like embed it into chingobling.com or like we could almost like find a way to bring it back to our space only because there's always going to be a new platform there's always going to be a new app and can you i don't know if clubhouse is still a thing if it's still popping i'm assuming a lot of people are still on it but it's like it's like shit i'm neglecting my youtube you know what i'm saying it's like mm -hmm. boy you you got youtube subscribers but you're not uploading every day and you're not making this and which i'm about to start but it's like damn it's like damn how much team and staff like you, it's like you're running around chasing everything like oh like even for tiktok mm -hmm. when i decided all right fine it's big enough it's getting to the point where it's so big to where like I feel like I'm losing out not being on there. Mm -hmm. And then we built it up to like well over 100,000 subscribers. I ended up getting banned. But in order to get it that big, like we were having to dedicate time, energy, research. Like, okay, what kind of TikToks we got to make? And every once in a while, their algorithm would let me be seen. And it's like, oh, shit, this reminds me of you get addicted with the dopamine where you're like... This reminds me of when the Facebook was first popping and you'd upload something and people actually saw it and the comments are going crazy. And it's like, man, there's always going to be a new app. So I, that's that's the obstacle for me. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it'll always go back to chingobling.com and the newsletter so that you can always be up to date directly from the source. Not hoping that an app or an algorithm lets you see what's going on. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate this podcast because it's one of the few things that has been consistent you know what i'm saying consistently yeah. managed and run to where it's like no we get in we record it gets uploaded we knock it out and we're on to the next and boom and boom and and it's a machine and it's a system for you know it episode 100 um feedback at the shows i am on tour um if i could just get that same consistency you know in all other aspects it's like no your youtube is great or or whatever it may be like yo you're putting out songs all the time they're really funny and great and this and that so we gonna figure it out i'm i'm gonna have to make rob music manager yeah let's do it um all right what where, is that where are you comment? going to next we're headed to irvine california november 3rd what what is that comment looking forward to seeing you in irvine for show sure, irene 310 commented on the patreon shout out that's your next stop next week right y yeah so this weekend it's super after my wife's birthday but um we got to get a little getaway like we just been going it any getaway was always like with the kids going to do a show we're going to san antonio going to addison and it's like happy birthday but we'll get to that later 
Let's get into we that Chingo Chats. Let's get into Chingo Chats. All right. Thank you, guys. That was episode 100. Keep your head up. Talk to you soon. Sass.